Jim, I'll start with you. Certainly we've seen this legislation push coming into the final weeks of the year despite impeachment right now. But when you have the House Speaker coming out and saying she's going to delay sending those impeachment charges over to the Senate, how much of a risk does that become to more lawmaking as we go into 2020? Well, it may be a risk to lawmaking, but it's not yet a risk to the market. In fact, uh, the impeachment process so far has been obviously a political but not a market event. The market focused very squarely on the Fed in its corner, a good slow growth, not no growth economic trajectory, the health of the U.S. consumer in terms of being fully employed, uh, reasonably good savings levels, certainly good household debt, enabling them to spend more as the driver of our economy. That's one key takeaway that investors, I think, will be able to take with them into what we expect to be a fairly politically charged 2020. David, when it comes to trade, whether it's USMCA moving through Congress right now, whether it's this phase one uh, trade deal with China that is uh, in the final throes uh, and expected to, the final text expected to be signed in the next couple of weeks, how much is priced into the market? Morgan, I think, I think some of the move we've seen in markets over the last couple of months, uh, you know, for, for example, U.S. stocks, uh, as measured by the S&P, are up just about 7 percent since September 30th. I think some of that move is reflective of progress on, on the trade front. But I think the other thing that's happening is that there's more confidence that the global manufacturing soft patch that has really been the story all year is, is looks like it's bottoming and, and should begin to improve in 2020. So uh, a couple of things have been driving the markets over the last couple of months, but I don't think all of the upside is priced in. Uh, if we do get a, a final trade agreement signed with China and we see a recovery in, in this soft patch that I was talking about, you know, we, we could see uh, U.S. markets continue to grind higher another five, six, seven percent uh, over the next several months. So, Jim, looking at what you like in 2020, you say blue chip dividend growers, you say mid and small cap value. I mean, it sounds like you're pretty cautious. Like, given the type of year that we had uh, this year, why the caution? <laughs> I think it's only prudent to be cautious after not just uh, this year's spectacular run in the S&P and the Dow, but also the decadal bull run that we've been on. That said, we think there are plenty of opportunities, uh, really globally speaking, especially in the SMID uh, range, the small, the mid-cap value range, overseas, established foreign markets, maybe somewhat in the emerging markets as well. But we don't want to give up on our battleship balance sheet, blue chip dividend growers, any more than we're likely to give up on health care. In fact, we'll be likely to be adding to that position on politically motivated dips, and we expect to see those dips materialize, especially with regard to the healthcare sector, as we get into the election during the 2020. David, I put the same question to you. What do you like right now? What would you be avoiding as we head into 2020? So from a sector perspective, uh, two sectors that, that look very appealing to us are consumer discretionary and communication services. Uh, so consumer discretionary, uh, we were just talking, Jim was just mentioning how the U.S. consumer is very healthy. We, we fully agree uh, that should really support the consumer discretionary sector, plus it's a beneficiary of e-commerce. Within communication services, uh, I think there's, a bene there's, there's an opportunity to ride the secular growth in the Internet companies uh, that are now trading at fairly low valuations and some of the media companies that are pivoting to, to some of the, the new higher growth areas. Uh, we're underweight uh, tech and, and energy, tech for, for high valuations, energy because we have very adequate supplies of, of energy, uh, and especially oil. And then I'd also point out emerging markets is an area that we just recently upgraded. So if we do see this improvement in the global economic backdrop, emerging markets should be a key beneficiary. And David, par parse that for us, because uh, when a lot of people think tech, they're probably thinking some names that, that you're putting in other categories. When you say you're underweight tech, what does that right. not include that people might think of when they think tech? What does it include? Sure. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good point. Um, within tech, uh, we're not included. Well, so the sector has got a little bit of reshuffled around. And right now, Google, Facebook, exactly. the Internet companies are in the communication services sector. So that's an area that we like. Tech uh, is really... Uh, the Apple, it's Apple, and the software companies, Microsoft being the biggest. Uh, those, and that's, and the semiconductor sector, and that's where we see uh, pretty high valuation, certainly the highest relative to the market in about 11 years, and that gives us a little bit of caution. There's been no earnings growth in, in tech this year, despite the fact that that, that sector is up over 45%. So just think elevation, uh, valuations are a little bit elevated.